Thank you so much, Alicia, for being with me today and doing part of our project, Speaking Truth to Youth. I just have a few questions I'd like to ask you. And the first one is, what events or beliefs in your youth led you to become an activist? You know, so much of my activism is inspired by my mother. And I grew up hearing all kinds of colloquialisms from her that really helped shape my kind of vision of the world. You know, my mom used to say things like, sex makes babies and babies are expensive. <laughs> and, you know, that was her way of kind of talking to me about the way our economy was organized and what it meant for women. She would say things like, you teach people how to treat you, <laughs> um, which is, you know, a, a testament to how it is that we build relationships, but also how we um, build accountability, particularly when we are trying to hold people in power accountable for the actions that they take on our behalf. My mom had so many different sayings, and my activism was really inspired not just by her sayings, but by her experiences. You know, my mother. Um, had me uh, alone and she didn't expect to. And what it meant was that she had to figure out a way uh, to make ends meet, to raise a child and to raise a black girl child in a world that does not value black lives. And so much of what my mom did every single day uh, was put her dreams aside so that I could pursue my own. And for me, what that inspired in me was a belief that women like my mother deserved to be able to pursue their dreams uh, while everybody else was awake, not just while everyone was asleep. And that no woman, no person should have to put their dreams aside uh, just because it was too difficult, right, in this world uh, to live with dignity and live with respect. And there are so many things that have happened. I'm 40 years old at this point. And so, you know, I was shaped in the culture of the 1980s, uh, when Ronald Reagan was the president. Uh, I was shaped in the 1980s where, uh, you know, music television was my way of understanding also world news. Um, I was shaped in a time when politically the country was changing pretty dramatically. And there were all of these narratives happening about black people, black communities, our worth and our value. You know, growing up, I remember the uprisings in Los Angeles when Rodney King was beaten by LAPD and it was caught on video camera uh, for one of the first times that I think uh, we had seen. Um, and so that actually led to the not guilty verdicts of so many of those officers and um, led to an uprising in Los Angeles that shaped my understanding of what was happening, uh, not just in my state, but also around the world in, in my communities. So I think there are many examples of events that have shaped my understanding of why we need to fight for a more just world and also what my role in that could be. What continues to motivate you or guide you or give you courage? What motivates me is that I believe that Black communities deserve to be powerful in every aspect of our lives. And that in order for us to get there, we have to change the rules that have been rigged against our communities for a very long time. Everything that I do, everything that I think about, every moment of my life I spend trying to figure out how to get us to be a little bit more free. And, you know, all of that is inspired by the people that I've met along the way who also share the same dream and share the same longing. And for me, the way that we accomplish that longing is by coming together and understanding the problems that are facing us every single day, understanding why those problems exist and who's responsible, and then coming up with a plan together for how we're going to change it and taking collective action together. When you talk to people who say, but all lives matter. What do you respond? <laughs> all lives do matter. And unfortunately, in practice, that's not true. So if we want to get to a place where all lives matter, we have to fight for the lives that currently don't. That's the only way that we get to equity. So what advice do you have for youth activists? For young people out there who are trying to change the world, change the things that you can no longer abide by, uh, my advice would be have a soft heart and tough skin. The reality is this work is hard 
and change doesn't happen overnight. It takes a lot of work, a lot of dedication, but also I will say there will be disappointments along the way. So it's important to keep your heart open, to keep your heart soft, to continue to be compassionate and empathetic, but also driven by love, but also have a tough skin. Understand that um, there are lots of barriers and obstacles that you will face along the way, but don't let that distract you or um, change your vision of what is possible. It's just a part of the process. I've interviewed a number of the portrait subjects for Americans Who Tell the Truth. And just about everybody has said, you have to be grounded in love, mm-hmm. which I think is not something that people normally think of when they think about activists. But if you don't come from a place of love, you burn out pretty fast, I imagine. That's right. That's right. Thank you so much, Alicia. I really appreciate it. It's been great to meet you and talk to you. And best of luck with all you're doing. Have a great day. Thanks. You too.